Welcome back, everyone, to Tiano, the last series of Iberia. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover. But the rise of a Portuguese separatist group, the unabating whispers of the AASS and former speak of new, disturbing developments. Separatist agitation has begun a ramp up in Portugal, of all places, previously thought of as being one of the region of the Union not plagued by petty nationalism. It now signs show an increase in leftist organizational and political activity, coalescing around the demand for an independent and socialist Portugal. The forces of the Portuguese left seem to be abandoning their differences and uniting across ideological and party lines, something that the Spanish left was not able to do truly 20 years ago during the Spanish Civil War. A single name and banner has been appearing around the cities in form of anti iberian posters and offered their propaganda. The FSLP, uh, the Socialist Front of Portuguese Liberation. These developments will have to be closely monitored and dealt with before anything else too drastic can happen. A ghost from a faraway past from an undying border. And don't mind about South Africa. Native settlers clash with causes deaths. Tensions have reached an all-time high as Iberian mainlanders, furious with their lack of legal primacy, have resorted to less than legal methods of intimidating nearby colonial. Bands of retornados, armed with makeshift weapons, have started to hunt down and beat colonials they find vulnerable. This has led to when the natives brought, started to fight back, creating what was quickly named Brigas Repetinas, for their spontaneous and violent nature. As with all incidents, these fights began to escalate from two or three as to many ten to fifteen on each side. Of course, it has escalated again. After the number of a retornado by a colonial native, the murder of one, riots have broken out in major cities around the colonies between both. The Gaudiria Civil is on standby when the death tolls at poison only increase unless the riots are put down immediately, intervene and disperse. And we do have a cup of mint tea here to keep us nice and warm. As I did read this one last time. If you read this, please give me your head. And collaborate with the state as well. Um, I could ten people. It would be nice to agree, but bombing in Madrid kills nine. Oh boy. Uh, Cafeteria Rolando was attacked yesterday afternoon in Calle del Correro. Madrid killing 9 people and wounding another 51. Although no claim of responsibility was made, the attack is believed to have been carried out by the armed Basque separatist group ETA. The Rolando Cafe was located on 4 Calle del Correro in Madrid. Close to the general director of security, the headquarters of the Spanish police, it was regularly frequented by members of the police force and security services. The bomb was planted at the entrance of the building and exploded in the early morning during a busy lunchtime period. More than 300 people were eating in the neighboring El Tobagan restaurant at the time of the explosion. Two of whom were among the dead. The explosion caused significant damage to the nearby buildings, shattering the windows of the nearby General Directorate of Security, while two cars parked nearby were totally destroyed. The bomb caused part of the Rolando Cafe's ceiling to collapse, and guests staying in a pension above were injured due to falling through the gaps in the ceiling. The police immediately arrived and cordoned off the scene. Uh, two of the nine killed and eleven of the injured were members of the police force, however, the wound included the number two of the Spanish political, fo uh, political force, with the remainder employees and customers of the cafe. There's a severely injured victim who's in a very critical state and is unlikely to survive. Stay calm, everybody. Stay calm. We totally have this under control and uh, set or stand down. There's a group of men sat within a holding cell and some in the distant prison knew nothing of. They get along quickly. They seem to have soulmates in a way. The conversation eventually leads them to the good question. What were they in for? All present had the same reason, the disruption of common decency, but they all knew that they were in for protesting the new citizenship laws. They eventually split up and caused for their deeds, of course. Uh, sets like this become very common. At least for a small while, the Gaudia civil intervened. They, interested, they arrested a large number of rioting settlers. For the following, the following the show of force, most of the remaining surrendered. It seems that they won't be complaining about the citizenship again. You better, in a contempt people. Once we completed the changes to the social side of the Constitution, it was decided that keeping them in playing limbo while drafting the other side of the Constitution would do nothing to aid the state in the, new, in the view of the people. So we released the changes to the public, allowing them to see what we were planning in the new revision of the Constitution. Once they've been dispersed properly, we took a survey to gauge public opinion. But the results all then, we've mostly gotten exactly what we desired. True, there are no people in the streets screaming our names in almost religious praise, but that's acceptable. Our survey shows that the people of Liberia are pleased with our changes. It's not as good as we'd hope, but it's a great occurrence nonetheless in the judicial issue. If you look at the Iberian government, nothing better represents its horror state than the system of courts around the country. The compromise we made to form Iberia put the judicial system into the state it is. Portuguese cannot be tried in Spanish courts, and the reverse is true as well. Regional courts can overrule one another, leading to the entire cases and trials disrupting or becoming disrupted because of some petty grievances between judges. Even worse, the federal courts have been rendered loose toothless, meaning that they cannot stop or even remain in the madness. What kind of system is this? It was created by the Caldillos, are sure, but there's no way that this is what they intended. Justice and rule of law are the most important thing for a functioning state, and we have neither. The Caldillos must try once more to create a sol uh, solid judicial court, and this time leave nothing to chance. Manuel Fraga's stand against that terrorism. When he was a professor at the University of Duesto, Cecilio Marinelarna would never imagine himself having a political career. As the only Basque economist on the Iberian Council, uh, Malinelarna had frequently involved himself in discussions regarding the growth of terrorist activity in the region. He held the controversial belief that through, though the Basque country was overall among the wealthiest regions in Iberia, the rapid economic change in the past decade were nonetheless significant factors of the growth of separatist extremism. As Valcarcel uh, concluded his introductory remarks, listen carefully to hear the full details of the bill Manuel Fraga, uh, newly appointed Minister of Information, was about to introduce. 
Gentlemen, I am pleased to report that in just this week, the Accentia Antiseparatista uncovered and destroyed a large ETA weapons cache near Vittoria and arrested 12 terrorist plotters in Tarragona. Fraga paused while the audience cheered. While the seizure of weapons and arrest of conspirators are vital to the Union's security, and the recent victories are significant, our immediate efforts are just as critical. A cache of 10,000 guns means nothing without as many terrorists uh, to hold them, which is why I'm putting forth the bill to increase funding to the AAS Information Office by 50%. Uh, to enable the AS to purchase radios and TVs at space at greatly reduced price. Um, and to initiate a thorough review of the history of textbooks used in secondary and tertiary schools to identify and remove separatist symp sympathetic content. Even before Farago gave the specific details of the bill, the loud applause made it obvious to everyone in the chamber that it would pass overwhelmingly. In the end, only five counselors of the 480 present voted nay, all hardline conservatives objecting to what they perceived as a soft and useless method to combat terrorism. Marinelnerlana. Uh, Oh my god, Marinelarne joined the applause and voted in favor of the bill, but though he publicly and privately supported the bill's aims, he was frustrated. He already had to worry about the paranoid conservatives suspecting that he was sympathetic to the separatists and the encounters of his origin. There's only so much he could feel comfortable suggesting that Iberia's economic policy contributed to radicalization. Is it really not just end the violence? Probably not. But that's okay. We're here for a good show. So we need 50 here. We need 38 here. Oh, we're getting very close to the CNT FAI. Very, very close. Ah, Franco speaks against separatism. There is nothing worse than nothing in the world than terrorists, begins the Cadillo. A uh, somewhat raspy tone under every word he spoke. Kind of like how I uh, titled the uh, video last time. They like, confound me at every turn, and in terms of justice. I do not understand them, and I probably never will. Iberia is a beautiful country, and when you bring the entire peninsula, then everything only gets more beautiful. I can see why my colleague is so proud of this mandate now. Franco allows himself a smile and almost even a chuckle before biting it down back down and continue speaking. We ought to be united as one country, indivisible until the Pyrenees. These separatists, these terrorists, that wish to break apart one of the greatest natural states to exist on God's earth. I come to you all today to beg you to not allow these monsters leeway. They're just that monsters. If they have even so much of an inch, they'll take the mile from you at gunpoint. And I care about you all, which is why I'm so committed to keeping you as well as possible. Never allow these criminals to destroy you. Like I do, you all speak for some more time and wanders off stage to the applause of the crowd. Thank you, thank you. You are all too kind. Due to the effort since the Battle of Barcelona, AAS resources begin to take up faster. Oh, God, let's hope so. Jesus Christ, let's hope so. Um. The Karelian War, eh? I can tell people. Good. Uh, we read this last time, so you read this, please. Or, we read this earlier. There you go. 36 still, huh? 50. Just, just lower this one just a little bit. Increase C and T support. Businessman's a Franco. Uh, go ahead and do that once. A diarchy question. When Iberia was first created, both Caudillos made a few compromises, specifically a few compromises with each other for all their advantages. One could not stop the other, nor did they want to in, want to in the face of a seemingly imminent German invasion. It seemed like an oxymoron, a riddle you had to puzzle, use to puzzle someone. How do you have two people with total power heading the same state? It took much effort, but something was eventually devised. It had been a long time since then. The times have changed with the, with the world, and the diarchy will likely need some changes as well. Neither Caudillo would lose their power. That could never happen on their watch, but the system requires at least a cursory view. We must make sure it is up to the times. Ah, look at that, yes. So now we have... Oh, that's not good. Oh, God dang it. It is possible to weaken them. Uh, and pretty much destroy them outright, so... Strike the leadership, and we still save two. And South Africa's still looking okay. They're still taking forever, but that's okay. Until every battle's won. Now, three years later, the anarchists of the CNT finally accepted their defeat. Our Sisus raids, arrests, and other policing actions have proven too much for the treacherous Reds, and what few terrorists remain have scattered to the winds. It's been our hardest won victory yet by far. Support for the anarcho syndicalist movement has never died in Catalonia, given the traitors no shortage of refugee material support. The workers of Barcelona were a particularly difficult obstacle to surmount in the pursuit of the CNT, but no task is beyond the capabilities of the AAS. Perhaps with their arm wing broken, the Catalan anarchists will see the futility of the cause and abandon it for good. The AAS is skeptical, but as has to say that one of the largest thorns in their side has finally been removed. Absolute freedom is no better than chaos. Beautiful. Am I not, uh, still not good to take that. Huh. We're still trying to do all this stuff down here, too, so. Uh, disturbing news regarding the Accentia. There's no secret that in uh, 
The government circles of the Accentia has been in a somewhat pleasant times. The agency performance is down, and reports have gotten progressively less detailed as the whole organization seems to be sputtering to a standstill. At least they have the most part of attending an adequate number of separatists, attending to it, and are generally passable enough to be, or left to, left to be. That is until a distressing alert to, as a, to the true function of the department's surface. The whistleblower was very anonymous, and the information traveled through very tight channels to make sure it was not intercepted. The level of allegations are very serious of extreme corruption or ne rapid nepotism, and a system designed to keep it all from leaking out. The most disturbing implication of all was the suggestion that some reports are fake, meaning that Accentia is not as effective as hoped to be. It's very clear, very clearly a serious issue, making sure it is resolved, of course, if there is something to resolve, will be high priority. First question is where to start. There are many facets to the Accentia, and one can have only sustained and only one can have sustained scrutiny. It may be the fault of a horrible administrative class which cares only for their own pockets. The military cannot be ruled out, however, as they have very close ties to the organization. No matter where the corruption mu might, must be concentrated, as rumors are true, then both parties will share some level of blame. The investigation has to be very careful who is the most likely group of perpetrators. Admin issues? A stronger Franco may improve the outcome of the AS investigations. Integration with the military may be relevant. Um... I don't remember. This is going to go probably backfire on us, but it's just a problem. A councilman, a short fellow with a bushy face, prepared a speech. Well, technically, uh, it had been handed to him by Franco, but for all intents and purposes, it was, of course, his. That's a terrible issue with the modern Iberia that, for all its pouring as a unified, or posturing as a unified country, it doesn't have a rifle judiciary. A unified judiciary, I should say. The system is decentralized, and the regional courts can run around as if they're independent. You quietly hope that they didn't seem to monotone, and Iberia can only. Ha fulfill its promises of unity when all elements of the country are united, as if they are never separate. Our courts are no different. Are there any questions? Someone who has dread had a question. How would we best integrate these courts? Centralization should only be tempted if we can ensure it does not go poorly. Therefore, I want to hear your ideas on the matter. Oh, no. In all an act of divine providence, someone was able to interject and answer the question, moving the pressure away from it. The debate was similar in nature, but the final consensus was that ultimately decentralization. Decentralized justice is fine. We must centralize the justice apparatus. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, stability. Wait. They hurt stability really badly. Those regimes, families. Uh, even though any perfect government has no factions or cliques, every regular government has plenty. We are definitely no exception, of course. Um, internal factions have been a constant uh, presence ever since both regimes were established and they've remained throughout the founding of the Union. We have different groups of families of the state, and there are many the party itself, the army, church, and so on. Uh, every group has their own power and influence, and while they're all ultimately uh, subservient to the Caduyos, they can still cause incidents in the government, even though they're not official. It would do some good to interfere with them, ever so slightly. If we balance their power and broke up a few of the less useful cliques, it is a definite possibility that more of them could be squeezed out of exploiting them. Credible allegations of AAS corruption. With such serious accusations, it's a good idea to wait a little while before becoming, getting a bit more information. Over time, worrying implications have become a dangerous certainty. Uh, there are many unpleasant trends leaked by an unknown whistleblower, hinting at a trend of nepotism within the Accentia. Note the rate at which new information is being leaked is almost unbearably slow. The leaks in question are very reliable, which brought much more into question uh, about the scope of the uh, corruption that first anticipated. Is there anything else? Bureaucrats and the military, huh? Nope. Most of them are snackies. Bureaucrats' opinions, huh? Well, we might as well use whatever one that, uh, so you can do the bureaucrats or colonial, uh, settlers. Bureaucrats or settlers. Might as well. So the council, we are at 57 is not bad. Ah, oh, Francisco Franco, nice. Sense of improvement. Oh. Uh, have you practiced it all? Asked uh, Salazar, surveying the virgin chessboard from the black side of the board. Uh, D4, 6, D4, uh, D6. It's hard to find an appropriate opponent. Besides, I've been slightly busy doing the terrorists destroying this country. F4, D5. Salazar beheld the boar. Then they looked upward towards Franco. Salazar's not quite looking at him, but rather he seemed to be looking in the general direction. To think if one little thing had gone differently, I might have been playing chess with another man. Franco was silent for a moment. As that moment lengthened into several seconds, it became clear he was trying to figure out what that little thing was. Finally, he moved to a piece as he finally found what memory it was. Ah, San Giorgio. Maybe it was for the best. Not that I despise him, but that little line, when, line was quite foolish. Now, um, what about you? Do you often give thought to how you got here? Sometimes, I suppose. Portugal's been my life, and who doesn't think about their life every once in a while? Uh, and the war, too. You hardly take risks like that anymore. What kind of question is that? Of course it was. There's not much risk to it either. Germany's winning, and, they, and then they did. Salazar's expression had changed. He seemed pleasant, confident. Franco was locked in a contemplative gaze, listening to the Caduyo and looking at the chessboard in equal focus. You still have to practice at this, started Salazar. You're not quite there yet. It certainly lasted longer than the last time. AAS. Officials deeply corrupt. 
Some time has passed, and that period, even more evidence has come out as to the actual day to day operations of Accentia. Waiting time between the shreds has been long and excruciating, but as time progressed, it became more and more substantial. Now, there's a case to be made. Much of the evidence is not totally verifiable, but enough circumstantial pieces of ev evidence have come together to make much more than a coincidence. It's clearly something afoot, even if it's not as bad as accused. This is something to be taken very seriously. If we take the wrong steps, and it could very well happen that any leads we have will be squandered on the boot of a corrupt official, covered up and prevented from reaching higher up to eyes one way or another, more investigation is needed and needs to be determined where this investigation will be directed. It can be put towards the bureaucrats directly, then using force and coercion to force information out of them. It can go badly, but it's the best promise of results. Alternatively, more subversive methods could be applied to glean information from suspects, no matter that decision. It will need to be handled with tenderness. Throwing the bureaucrats, it would directly threaten them. A less confrontational approach is needed. Well, let's try to threaten the bureaucrats, because why not? Oh, well, there they go. The elephant in the room. Finally, the dreaded full subject had arrived. The newest subject on the schedule is the status of the diarchy, the system under which Iberia accommodates both caudillos. The atmosphere in a manner which no subject before had accomplished merely grew reluctant. The Accentia representative was the first to speak up. Maybe we ought to not discuss that. We could do that, right? Salazar so waved them off. No, I'd say we ought to discuss the matter. It's how about high time something gets said. Of course, he looked over towards Franco with a very particular glint in his eyes. It'd be very disappointing if my colleague were to veto this discussion stop our productive debates. So what do you say, Franco? Baron discuss this. Let us come sooner or later. Facing the possible flaws, the regime will make reformism stronger, more conservatism, liberal conservatism, market liberals will be strengthened, as well as liberalism and social liberals are strengthened too. The AAS exposes insiders expose the military. He expected profit, a little extra money than his salary alone. He was a bureaucrat, paper pushing is what he excelled at, and he had wanted to keep it on until the day he could stamp, use a stamp no longer. It wasn't any harm what he had done, a little bit of money to a benefactor, and keep a finder's fee of his own. How did anyone notice? It was all that darn ring's fault. If he had gotten something cheaper for his lover, then none of, then none of this would have ever happened. Under the cruel lamplight he broke, they had known everything, down to the tiny secret. There wasn't enough between him and his benefactor to keep all the heck from breaking loose on him if he slipped, so he had to make sure he was kept safe, or that his higher-ups had a brick wall around him. With that in mind, he found a thread in his mind, began to spin a yarn for his captor audience. Many critical details have been gained from the interrogation of bureaucrats involved for certain, for certain with the case. While well, it was brought to them, uh, or brought to the confession, was uncertain. What is known is the darning evidence or length that the case has, has within the Accentia. Many are corrupt to some degree or another, but the worst in particular are some of the higher staff. In hindsight, it's not surprising, but, so, but such blatant corruption never hurts any less. We'll see what we can get out of the superiors, the administrative pyramid. The system of governance devised by the Caldeos is very peculiar. Unique might be a better word. Each province of the country is represented equally, and there are parts of the two constituent countries, Portugal and Spain. They are both uh, represented equally in the Union itself, and, it is, and has the final say in many regards. However, there are certain issues with the system, a lack of adequately clear provisions, as well as some uncertain edge cases that have turned the administrative system into a hydra that is more inclined to smack its heads together, a distinct lack of the harmony required to run a union like ours. We were, were we to clearly define what each level can and cannot do in relation to itself and the others, we could have the country run much better. The pros and cons of diarchy. Of course, nobody wants to start an argument with the diarchy. Not in front of the Caudillos. To this end, we were provided a summary of the powers of the diarchy, and were charged with figuring out the Byzantine web of bureaucracy. The men present, for the most part, agreed that the best way to be to assemble a list of pros and cons. A con institution would stay for sure, but figuring out where it succeed and fail would be critical. Oh crap. FSLP. FSLP. Lower stabi stability by three. Or you currently stable, we may probably become very unstable, but the freedom of pill. As you below spoke nervously, well, doctor, I've, uh, I've been having these cramps lately, that is. I can't concentrate on my on any of my duties. I heard there's this pill. Relax, you know how many girls come through asking about that? I'll write your prescription. Is there anything else you needed to ask me about? No, just a prescription. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Give me five minutes and I'll have it ready for you. The doctor sat up from his seat, took, shook El Isabel's hand, and walked out of the office. Seriously? That was all it took to get birth control? To think what she was doing right now was technically illegal. Indeed, she was being truthful about the cramps, but that's not why she'd come here. Contraception had always been illegal, and non-reproductive sex was always severely stigmatized in Iberia. Sex before marriage is sin, her religious studies teacher had told her uh, class over and over again. As a woman's duty to have many kids, her own parents had drawn into her from early childhood, without children. There'd be no future, she had to clear her a thousand times, and a thousand times again. But as much as the Catholic Church and the equally conservative Cadiz would like to deny it, attitudes about sex were changing. The pale promised freedom from the fear of pregnancy, freedom to do with their partner with what they both wanted for some time, but could not. Freedom to live and love as she chooses. Uh, birth control has done a lot of things for this world. The truth revealed, the corruption within the AAS is so much worse than was originally suggested. Almost every agent is crooked, engaging in open nepotism and participating in a mass culture of cronyism which is, in which duty is regularly abrogated in favor of personal gain. The raw within the system was so palatable one could almost physically touch it. Leaving anything in a, such a state would be a tarnish upon Iberia's honor and an eternal stain upon her government. Therefore, something needs to be done. 
The first question on the long road reform is what to do with the corrupt officers in question. They may be liable to a deal on some proper force of puppy and the offers, then they may become compliant once more. After all, a greedy man may be partial to reform if reform is the only thing keeping him from fire firing squad. On the other hand, who says these people deserve a light hand? They've been committing crimes atrocious in scale, and who's to say they wouldn't again? Ultimately, boils down to whether or not this sort of behavior is accepted, or they can be trusted, or can be turned to our advantage. It depends how deep it is. It doesn't go well, we'll try to strike a deal for now, but we have only 15 resources, we need 49, 53, okay, we're going to become very unstable. Crap. Because it is beginning to argue, one of the be largest benefits of the dialogue is to increase cooperation between leaders. Creating an apparatus where two people may respond decisively to issues, rather than one, yes, the cleric looked at the codillos. Actually, Salazar said, the political apparatus does not encourage decisive interaction, mark that off. In fact, I'd even say it goes so far as hinder a decisive action, with even the tiniest thing to protect the country. Enough, you petty dude, Franco snapped. It's enough that you groan and grumble over every little measure that doesn't coddle you like a darn child. I'll get one good thing done, and all you can think, do, think, do think, think about is taking jabs at me. To continue to bicker at this point of line of the world beyond what they could use to argue the other. The council became one of the first external groups to see in all its glory the way in which the Caldeos cooperated. Everyone except the two dictators sat in silence, unable to muster the will to move or even stop the argument. The clerk sh himself shrank back, unwilling to be near the source of this yelling at the moment. If that came to his head, shouldn't he, he will try to actually do something about this? So I'm probably go farther. Let him sort it out. We have the political power for dealing with bureaucrats. The extensive administrators would like to be better off loyal. And we know acknowledge that. We also know how to make them that way, and they will require encouragement. It was much easier to keep a greedy man working for you as all that requires to make this sure his paycheck is on time. He's been exactly that, and the bureaucrat can ensure that their Bureaucrats ensure that their wealth is by draining necessary resources from the Accentia. For the sake of the country, this must come to an end. To force them to comply, some force will be placed behind the deal given to them, but what kind of deal will be provided? Some members of the inner circle of the government advise the Caduce to follow the path of compromise. Negotiate with the culprits to find a solution acceptable to both. It's good work, but may not prove as beneficial as the other solution, which of course is the inner circle's advice. It's suggested to come down hard on the man in the question, making what would be essentially be a threat in exchange for cooperation. Even though it's impossible to tell whether it would work, it could offer records to be much cleaner at the end of the day. FS, FSLP Raid Television Studio. Crap. This has been in addition to the, being the capital of Portugal, it's also the location of the main broadcasting center for the Portuguese language version of the state controlled news. Unlike the HQ in Madrid, where the news was broadcast in Castilian Spanish and the newsrooms filled with the shouting and commotion, the Lisbon headquarters tended to be on the commerce side, at least until the, today. Nobody's quite sure how they managed to pull it off. Some claim that they were undercover agents working for the state news for months, waiting for the right time, others claim that they were recent converts to the cause. While the official Madrid line is that the terrorists impersonated low level janitors and secretaries to infiltrate the building, whatever the case. The building was overwhelmed with the sound of gunfire and terrified shrieks until 8, 8 a.m., punctuated by the occasional spat and thick, sickening thud. Iberians, indeed, soon the world, will become very much aware of the FSLP terrorists, who taking control of the building used their position to broadcast live on the state TV for millions to see. The inner room littered with the corpses and the miserable hunched over forms of terrified employees, a masked spokesperson for the terrorists delivered what was in of their manifesto. There was no bombastic nationalist proclamations, nor was any harshness to his tone. The masked man delivered their grievances to a live audience with a surprising lack of emotion, even as the demands turned into direct threats on innocent lives. At some point about 15 minutes in, the masked man and his corps decided that they had, had said all they would needed to, and will not show brutality executed all remaining employees on the camera with a bullet to the head. By the time the anti-separatist forces arrived, the terrorists managed to make a clean getaway. Leaving behind a newsroom in disarray and piles upon piles of corpses. If the manifesto is any indication, the FSLP does not plan on slowing up on these heinous acts until their demands for free Portugal are for the event. Put the country in higher alert. Well, we're screwed. I mean, this is this is god awful at this point. The hands come out. The stunned silence was finally broken when Franco, fed up with the actions of his colleagues, slapped Salazar in the mouth. Oh boy, it was enough to silence the Portuguese dictator and who sat shocked. At a few seconds, he lunged for Franco with a yell. The two had started to come to blows, wrestling with one another. A few slaps, a couple punches, but the two were held back by their advanced age, yet again. Uh, the council was stunned in silence. The army representative suddenly stood up, almost dragging the Accentia agent out of his seat. We need to stop them before they hurt themselves, the officer turned to the agent to the door. Find a phone, call the Guardia Civil. As the Accentia representative ran off, the military man turned to the rest of the council. He needed to lead them, too, it seemed. Should he get some people to help him break up the Cadillos, or have a few explain to the Guardia? Help him. We only have 23. Are you kidding me? The council battle. It's over. You can't win with this. I hate Iberia. I hate this. You just cannot win. Even when you try to help them out, you, they still can't win. The officer went to the stop the council to stop the councilman, only to be interrupted by an airborne uh, suitcase. The object whacked the councilman in the head with a tremendous thump. He didn't seem to be dead on closer inspection, merely unconscious. But those few moments allowed all heck to break loose. Oh, look at that. Uh, the soldier held the, the true nature of the discussion as the entire council dissolved in anarchy. Man fought man, and although nobody seemed to be using weapons, they sure did zealously swing their fists. 
don't think he'd be doing about them, and his mind quickly thought, so he did the only thing he could. It was very easy to break up the Caudillo. It was simply a matter of prying the two old men apart. Then he kept the two away from each other until the Guardia civil arrived, a tense few minutes. The guard had much more to break up the meeting than he could, seemingly absorbing the hostility of the rumble and using it against the councilman. After an eternity to fight, the damages were just tallied. A large number of men or members had been arrested for their brawling, and the Caldeus were sent to their homes for, to stew for a while until the event was behind them. It was quite an unfortunate event, but perhaps it was better to have it settled now rather than an even more important event. Bureaucrats call the bluff. Uh, the Ministry of the Pyramid. When Franco came to the negotiating table, he had quite a few strong demands. He was ready to argue, mislead, and ultimately convince the bureaucrats to agree to most of his demands and bring them into the fold under the terms strongly favoring him. I got him totally unprepared when they flatly rejected his terms, refusing to make a deal under nearly any of the terms he presented them with. When pressed on why they were able to give no end of jurisdictions or justifications, the most common which was the view on the de other departments. They did not even go to terms like this, they argued, so there's no reason for the extensity to get them either. For every term, they were able to find a similar argument of how no other organization got a deal of the sort. It took every part of Franco's persistent ability to stop them from walking away entirely with their ill-gotten gains. The bureaucrats were unresponsive to a deal, and even slightly interested them, it was required a budget of many terms. It was likely impossible we would get a good deal out of them, but the Caudillo will put up a strong showing regardless, strong enough as it happens to attempt to compromise on many issues. If anyone can do it, he can. Offer a compromise. Bureaucrats got it. Bureaucracy is and always will be a uh, precious balancing act. If they have too little, the state will be paralyzed and cease to function. Should you have too much, you have a bloated monster who is only capable of propping up his own suffering. Eventually, both will collapse in, the, in, in, in on themselves. For everyone's sake, we cannot be either. We are, however, the latter. When the Union was first created, the root of all evil it seems, the compromise made led to what we have now, a bloated monstrosity that chokes the life out of everyone thinking it touches. As part of the recent governmental reforms, it would do no harm to give the bureaucracy its long overdue audit. There are many superfluous parts, certainly when we simply have to find out what needs rooted out. Families, other regime, the Caldeos. The first most powerful clique in Iberia was the leaders. The Caldeos uh, guided the state and cooperated even when the all pragmatic logic begs for the stop backstabbing and treachery. They are capable even as they age, at their, and their guiding hands have saved the entire peninsula from collapsing into a bloody anarchy. What in the world is there to fight them for? Yeah, everything is good. Yeah, look at all that political power we don't have. Families of the regime, military. At the right end of the Caudillos is the enforcement arm, the military. Franco and the military have had a very productive relationship dating back decades. And although Salazar is not as familiar to the soldiers and generals, he has a sense, has a sense to usually defer to Franco on such matters. The military is very influential, and at no point allows the Caudillos to forget that they can remove them from power. To this end, no action against them is necessary. It would only create a conflict that the military has every chance of winning. They can make themselves irreplaceable, but not much else. Oh, the AAS bureaucrats accept a compromise. Faced with both unwillingness and the inability to strike up a strong, definitive deal with the bureaucrats, Franco's has been forced to the table in a different position. Weakened and discredited by this failure to enforce the terms he sought to set out, the dynamic of power began to move away from the elder Caldillo. His persuasive acumen is one to be admired, however, and he managed to salvage the best out of the less than ideal situation. Engaged in a contest of words, each side presented issues and tried to split down the middle until they found something to both their satisfactions. The end result was the birth of a deal, created not only to satisfy both camps, but to make both bureaucrats and Franco agree. It bound the excellency of bureaucrats, if only slightly, but did not stop them to nearly the degree it was intended. Even so, they still appear to be following the compromises laid out, and to that end, they still have kept the bargain they struck. Better than nothing. There's a bunch of crap. I mean, how are you supposed to deal with this? You cannot. You literally cannot deal with this, with how bad it is right now. Um, but I do want to do some more of the family regime change before I start and redo this again for like the 17th time. But I bear it's like so, so painful to play. The church. Favoring the cross over the sword, similarly acquainted with the Caldeus, is the Catholic Church. It's an incredibly influential institution, holding total dominance over the Iberian religion. It permeates all facets of life in some way, the centerpiece of a stage is carefully constructed to accommodate it by the many rulers of Spain and Portugal. Because of its position, it's coincidentally a very important institution to keep loyal. The faith of many leads them to believe the church, and if the church is friendly to us, then so will the congregations follow. So, some would argue that this is not a good thing. There's been an argument that the influence of the church, its monopolistic control of the education religion, and in many ways the thoughts of the faithful, is too great. The same groups arguing that, arguing this, propose that the church's influence be checked, so that Iberia is not dependent on its loyalty. Of course, if they're not checked, there is no reason to fit over their loyalty. Take away some of their power. Uh, make reforms them stronger. Families regime the party less. So public with subsidized higher, less political power, more cost, more taxable population, better poverty, academic and research points remains untouched. The party. A state, unfortunately, cannot be run only by two people. They must delegate and give up shreds of their power to less men so that the matter of government is not totally overwhelming. This applies to the Caldeos. In their age, they have tried to find other men to run matters that they can no longer perform. This is the foundation of the Union Nacional, now, the party which runs uh, what the Caldeos cannot. Despite for only being one group, anyone with any knowledge of it knows that there is far more than one group within the party. Reformists, technocrats, and hardliners are just a few of the groups who are perpetually, perpetually struggling with one another for the favor of the Caldeos. This factionalism is agitating as it hurts unity and harms Iberia as a whole through constant scheming. However, it also stops any of the groups from growing dominant and imposing their views on the state. Is the status quo preferable? Impose the will. 
let them quarrel. Those are a maim. There would be a false claim that our beer has been politically stagnant throughout the years. The greatest example is perhaps the creation of the Union itself, although there are many finer details that are overlooked. A few of these details are some of the smaller, less relevant families. The old Falanges, Carlos, and the Monarchists are only a few of the groups that have only sw uh, slowly withered away to not. Iberia killed them. They are irrelevant, minor, and it seems that they are going to disappear in a few years. In fact, the only reason they still exist is because they haven't realized they, that they no longer exist without our intervention. Then this group is certainly as other. Equally disunited. Groups take their place. However, if we so decide, we can perform a euthanasia on the dying families as to make the deaths quick, what it will be, and the suffering. Let them die alone. Ah, look at that. Really weakening. Ah, despotism. Oh. Victory in Africa. Following a strenuous and expensive war in South Africa, we have finally emerged as a victor alongside the U.S. While our contributions pale in comparison to the immense military investment set forth by the U.S. efforts, our efforts are nonetheless significant and fruitful. Following such efforts, Salazar stands firm in his belief that it bears earned a significant reward for our efforts. More specifically, he states he believes that it bears earned back former Portuguese colonies in Africa. Whilst the return of the Portuguese colonies is a favorable fantasy for Salazar, reality is often disappointing. For a beer to seize these lands for herself once again would likely act as a counter to the interests of nearly all powers in the region. While we may put forward the argument that we have simply amply paid for this return of blood, it means highly uncertain whether the Americans will see things the same way. Regardless, Salazar stands firm that we must toss the dice and formally request that the Americans permit the return of the Iberian rule to the former Portuguese colonial possessions. Get political power, expand reformism in the council. In both cases, improve our stability, which is something we could use. It's stable for now, but you never know how bad it's going to be. Uh, so that's our one's calling return, but we just don't go for that. Uh, I mean, you know what? There's no way that'll go well. Yeah, as much as I want the political power, this could backfire on us, and I don't want Salazar to get any more influence at all. The double AS still struggling. There was a culture of sorts of corruption with the Vaxensia. Although it was encouraged to take money, keep quiet, and be content with your slice of the pie, it's not the conductive to a government agency, so it barely functioned under the weight of its employees, don't grieve. So we're called Duyo was forced to step in. In an attempt to resolve it, even though we put the best of his deal-making abilities to the test, simply wasn't enough to create a sufficient arrangement. What it was able to arrange was enough to stop the worst excesses of Accentia, and create something that was arguably functional, but is still unable to do, stop it entirely. For the most part, the money crossed hands under the table, from governmental coffers to the unfaithful clerks. There was no denying that what was in place worked vastly better than it did originally, but that did not mean much. Separatists were still able to move around the Byzantine system. But now they at least had to watch your feet for a bit more closely. You know how to deal, but what can we do? We'll keep, it'll keep struggling, and the resources will continue to grow slowly. We lose political power, of course, why not? Lackluster conditions that double AS will strengthen reformism, which is good. Slowly decrease security oppressive per uh, security oppressive police, increase activity, crap. So, but that has opened up opportunities for us to, um, well, diminish, I guess. Shall charge damage in front of everyone? Reduce military spending? Good. Well, not good, but whatever. Liberal conservatism goes up. Uh, what do we get here? Social liberals are strengthened. So we probably do this one last. Restrict government funding of universities. Um, oh, decrease colonial subsidies. Cut subsidies. Cut colonial subsidies. Oh, God. Uh, dial back foreign aid. Re reduce agricultural subsidies. Decrease our agricultural subsidies by a little bit. S12. Oh, growth will increase by 0.1. I think so. And, of course, we're doing all this stuff here, too, as well. But, you know, it is what it is. A bureaucratic audit, of course, we're doing. Um, if you want to do this again, please go ahead. The contemporary state. Finally, after an eternity of precise revision, the new draft of the governmental side of the Constitution is complete. Uh, as one compares the new with the old, of course, uh, the differences become much more drastic than they were during the drafting. An old antiquated system was during, made during a totally different era has been torn down. The amalgamation has been slain in its place. A true government, of course, rises. The compromises that were created in the old state are no longer. We have, in essence, a... Uh, uh, an untied great knot reforging system into one Iberia rather than two countries prepared to die in one another's arms. The Union shall face the 60s proudly, a modern state. Bombing Madrid kills 12. Shh, Nikes. Uh, we'll do this one next. Uh, if you want to bet that, please go ahead. Bombing Madrid. The Plaza Republica, Republica Dominicana has been attacked yesterday as ETA separatists via car bomb in Madrid, killing 12 people and injuring a further 32. The day were all members of the Guardia Civil, studying in nearby traffic school on the Princip de Vergara. The target of police convoy consisted of 70 civilian guards. J between 18 and 25 had left a traffic school in order to head to the Venta de la Rubia, on the outskirts of the capital where the police engage in daily practice driving a motorcycle. The convoy was consisted of a bus, a minibus, and a Pegaso truck followed the same route at the same time every day, all of which, in likelihood, made the ETA's job easier. The car bomb was loaded with an estimated charge of 35 kilos of Goldman 2 explosives, and significant quantities of shrapnel was triggered by remote control by one of the terrorists, who had been waiting for the passing of the convoy at a nearby bus stop, and another one of the terrorists was waiting nearby in the vehicle to flee. Explosion in a horrifying might. Through the buzz into the air, four officers were killed instantly and 32 others were injured, including six civilians. And further four officers were pronounced dead shortly afterwards at the nearby La Paz Clinic, with the ninth dead announced at 21.30 the same day. 
Those injured included commuters waiting in a nearby bus stop while cars and property in the plaza were also damaged. They were fine young men. Such a waste. South Africa gives residents of Portuguese. Look at that. Following a lengthy South African war, many Portuguese volunteers sent by the Iberian government fell in love with the country for which they were sent to fight. As a result, once the war concluded and many of the soldiers were free from the contractual obligations to the military, several thousand Portuguese soldiers opted to settle down in South Africa, calling the country their new home, much like the Dutch and British settlers of old. While these Portuguese settlers had no official status within South Africa, the South African government has recently announced a change to the status. All Portuguese individuals currently residing within South Africa, as a thanks for the immense volume of Portuguese soldiers who fought for them, have been granted official permanent residency status within South Africa. As such, the thousands of Portuguese expats may now legally pursue a largely unrestricted private life. This moves uh, this act uh, lar this move acts largely as a thanks to the South African government to the brave Portuguese men who put their lives at risk for the continued existence of the South African nation, and as a gesture towards many of the who fell in the conflict. N never can they properly be repaid for their deeds. And the contemporary state helping improve its stability because right now we're at stable. Um, so, look at some comments included. Uh, separatism, huh? Someone says, uh, the Catalans, Catalonians, Basque, and Galicians are not terrorists, they just want independence. Well, one man is terrorist, another man is freedom fighter. Someone says, you should use the resources of the AAS to keep the terrorists down so you don't commit any big attacks that lowers your stability, and then, with the actual resources, try to kill the other organization. The ETA is the one who needs the most resources to go down, so I recommend going for it last. Um, someone says, interesting, seems like SS Action Grupa and Muscovy can create Ordenstadt Garderreich. Do you know what that means? I don't know, maybe Guard of the Reich? Guard? Hmm. Someone says, wait, this is not a no Atlantropa submod? Unfortunately not, my friends. Atlantropa at the time of recording is, well, no longer with us. I oh, know, big sadness. ETA, huh? Pretty thick here. Supplies, activity. Um, we'll do that one, because they're, they're pretty high up right now. But let's go ahead and read about approved. Uh, the government. Oh, wow, look at that. Uh, it is done. The government itself has taken to the new constitution with open arms. Even though the barrow beating of the Caldigios hasn't hurt, it seems they were just as relieved to have a reformed and functional state as the Caldigios themselves. With their approval, there was only one obstacle towards ratification, the final approval stamp. It wasn't an obstacle, really, since both Franco and Salazar were simply waiting for the opportunity. With everyone, or everything in order, there's only one t time. There's only time between Iberia and its modern future. There will never be another battle of Barcelona. Not while the Union stands with their new constitution. Look at that. Nice. Dial back for an aid. Uh, money stuff. Yes. Ah, look at that. Army stuff. Yes. Even though we're probably not going to use it very much at all. Nine more resources. How much do we need for this? 36. 48. Get rid of one of the supplies and really start cracking down on these guys. Mm, cost two. So we'll save more. So how much do we need? We need 32 to destroy the FSLP, which would be good. Um, so that's going to take a while to do, but that's okay. Uh, oh, damn, says 5 billion. My god, 90%? Oh, Jesus Christ. Our at least growth is higher than our debt interest, which is good. I want to spend more money, but we don't have money. You already deleted the Navy with no nukes. We're barely spending on the military. Social spending just costs so freaking much. My goodness. Because improved jet cast, I guess, is next. Um, poverty's getting better, though. That's good, though. And really getting up here, even though it's going to take forever to do, improving our deficient administrative systems will be very good as well. Hey, look at this guy! Welcome back. Cut subjects for Moroccan settlers. Oh, you betcha. Lean towards Franco, fully Salazar, fully Salazar, fully Franco, fully Franco. Nice, nice, nice. Ah, oh, that helps out a little bit, right? Where are we at with this? As we do have a cup of peppermint tea here to keep us nice and uh, refreshed. But happy September, everybody. New month, new us. Well, we'll see how we do. France loves with Germany. Well, okay. The corrected constitution is next. So, oh, we have five now. Oh, we got two more. We literally just got five, two more. That's nice. Pretty good. Um, let's see, I'll wait for this one. Increase A, resources by two. I'm glad these guys are dead already. I like them dead. There you go. Didn't do very much, but whatever. Subsidies, political power. Yeah. Ooh, increases income taxation. Oh, that's nice. Ooh. Income taxation? Oh, yes. Yes, please. Approved, my friends. You could get rid of this crippled sovereignty, but, you know, we're working on it. We're working on it. That's weird that these guys are all the way over here, though, in the co-prosperity sphere. So we have WRF led by Tukhachevsky, and we have, oh, Boris Yeltsin is here, right? Central Siberian Federation, the Pokrishkin, and the all-Russian government of the Far East led by Rozhevsky. He's going to, he's probably going to lose. It's so hard playing the Far East. It's not funny. It's just, it's so hard. I like Rozhevsky. He's an interesting guy. He really is a fun guy. Well, maybe not fun, but he's an interesting guy. We'll put it like that. Oh, Inflation's looking okay. The first day on the job. Uh, the countryside side of the Horona was unremarkable. The golden fields below the gray clouds. Um, interrupted. 
uh, above. Uh, two after Clarence Clash, occasionally interrupted by the uh, passing landmark. Guillermo was not, was not the one driving, the case he had been set on was light enough to only take him and his partner Alejandro. The AAS, an undercover vehicle, could feasibly fit four more people, though there were not going to be that many arrests. Rules of contact, asked his partner loudly. Possible non-violent, for, talk first, violent, shoot first, use careful discretion. This is possible non-violent, so keep her garland holstered and allow the senior agent you to do the talking. His partner snickered, what? Oh, nothing, Guillermo, it's just funny to see your new agents on diligent, so diligent about textbook trap. After a while longer on the road, the two men found themselves at their location, a man printing newspapers out of his garage. Not only did he clearly engage in the act of unauthorized self-publishing, the newspapers were also in Catalan. They most certainly were printed as separatist agitation, even though neither accents the operative could read the language, they're sure all the same. The two men took several copies of the newspaper, destroyed his printing press, and drove off with the agitator in his handcuffs. We came home that night, Guillermo reflected over his first day as a AAS operative. The agent of the office would handle the case from now on, using their evidence and testimony, but the process would be parallel to the traditional justice system. Such was the decree of the Caudillos following the horrific Battle of Barcelona, despite his flaws. Guillermo understood the necessity of the measures, and promised himself he would do what he could in the name of justice going forward, a promising start for a new operative, the correct Constitution. A new constitution, at least a draft of it, has been published. Copies have been printed in every newspaper possible, and nearly everyone in Iberia will have seen it by now. It certainly seems that what, this that way, based on the story we've created in the government without in the government and without the government. There's been dissent within the government, though it's a level minimal enough to be curbed. It is said that it's a good comp compromise, leave nobody happy. According to our political factions, the Constitution was a good compromise. Some argue it went too far, others not far enough, but then there's enough of both sides to ensure that there will always be an argument over it for a long time to come. Sure, this is what it will take. The Union will last forever and more, right? Right. Doesn't cost anything. It does suck if you wait 90 days for that. My God. So it's in the economy. The well, Iberian economy has been crippled and stagnated for years and ages, and there seems to be no end to sight. But the lack of GDP growth is the outright uphill struggle of the course. Correct the twisted administration half stuck in Spain, half stuck in Portugal, and entirely stuck in the past. If the Iberian Union is ever move forward, we must find a solution. Fortunately, three actions have presented themselves. Addressing the problems with plague Iberia shall be our first objective. As there are other media issues that begin to stabilize somewhat, say perhaps for the question of the separatists, we now begin to focus on the media challenges of the Union. What kind of we need to decide what kind of economic plan we'll be adopting for the next couple of years. Oh, we can't even do any of this stuff. The stabilization plan, uh, more decentralized by three. Market levels are strengthened by this change. Empowering the Opus Dao will strengthen reformism in the council. That's cool. Trust the ministries, which is the way we're going to go for this one. And then there's uh, reapply the old. We can reformism, huh? I might have gone this time before, but we're probably going to go with trust the ministries. I do want to do Opus Die. Did I do them last time? I might have. That seems really awesome. So, you know what? Uh, with this one, Market Lib. Let's, let's save. Let's save this together. Save together. So this is IBR. Um, with all my save games, it's a game like so hard. Oh my god, it lags so hard. Uh, win. Iberia. Uh, mark, market, market liberal save. Just in case we want to. If you want me to play as a market liberals, um, going from this point forward, please let me know. Because after doing the social liberals, because that's a, well, I was intending to go from the very beginning. Please let me know. But up is the appeals. Following the commencement of the deliberations, the various sects of the Iberian Council would waste no time in launching proposals for the economy. The discussions persist with no uh, progress, true progress to display. Both bureaucrats uh, continue to take the floor of the assembly, putting forth nothing but safe and unremarkable economic proposals. As the hours progress, the once lively atmosphere of the assembly hall becomes dull and subsided. The deadlock is finally broken as a senior member of the technocratic wing speaks. Gentlemen, he bellows. Our union is strained, and our economy lies in a disgrace with disarray. Our chosen partners of trade have all but forsaken us, and our abhorrent protectionism impedes any recovery in trade. We dare to attempt to solve our economic concerns alone, but we are failing. Gentlemen, the way forward is clear. We cannot alone solve the problem or the economic question. We must implement policies of liberalization. <coughs> As the man sits, members with ties to the Opus Dei and technocratic bloc rise to their feet and issue an organizing thunderous applause, with many of the more liberal elements of the assembly pitching in. Other elements of the council, however, remain less than enthused. Loud jeers erupted from the opposing wings, and many members shot obscenities towards the opposing side. The commotion finally dies down following several calls of order, and the proceedings resume. The Opus Dei continues to put forward detailed plans of economic liberalization, free trade, and free market and a marketed economy. They argue that despite the loss of state control over the economic affairs, the increasingly open Iberian economy will be attractive to investors both internal and external. Furthermore, they go to great lengths to outline the benefits of a new, uh, renewed Iberian presence in international trade. After a lengthy discussion, the Opus Dei concluded the proposals. Who is next? The Falangists. Following the Opus Dei's proposals for substantial reforms, reform favoring liberalization in an open economy, those opposed spare no time in gathering their response. A prominent leader of the right-wing Falangist takes to the floor and delivers his fire response. Have the liberals and technocrats been living in a cave for the past two decades? It certainly seems so. Or have they simply forgotten what happened to Iberia when it dared to rely on foreign powers? The lone source of our current disaster is Iberian reliance upon foreigners to protect our nation and protect our economy. It's got to end. This can end. Iberia's path to greatness lies inward. We shall alone be the masters of our economic destiny, not the profiteering foreign fat cats. 
Assembly Hall erupts in a tumultuous roar as nationalists and right-wing elements apply the counter to the liberal ideas. As the excitement commotion dies, excited commotion dies down. The Falangists begin to lay out the plan. With a radical emphasis upon autarky and nationalization, the Falangists' proposal outlines an Iberia that relies upon itself and itself only, a nation that possesses near unlimited economic control. They argue that the conditions required to bring Iberia to greatness are within reach, and that's all we must do now is reach out and seize the opportunity. Interesting. And Iberian Council waits to cut your statements. The economic debates of the Iberian Council raged on the final day of deliberations. What had originally begun as a broad spectrum of economic proposals now split in two camps, those favoring illiberalization and those favoring autarky. A good schism is formed within the assembly and no solution is in sight. Both camps are fervent in their beliefs and firmly believe that other camp is to be proposing an economic disaster. Tensions run high and any argument put forth by either side is swiftly met with jeers and counter-arguments. The assembly has stagnated. The Caldugos grow tired of the endless squabbles and jointly agree that a decision must be made now. The assembly is swiftly called intermission, and the politicians retreat to their blocks to revise their plans of action. Franco and Salazar exit the assembly chambers to a secluded room, in which they begin to deliberate the proposals put forth throughout the assembly. It remains unclear which side the Caldugos support, for the two leaders have thus far only played a role of expectation. The Iberian Council holds its breath. The future if our future is at stake. It shouldn't depend on what Salazar thinks. Good, then in decisive assembly, good. Oh. Franco will attempt to deal with political instability in Iberia, huh? The Caldeos agree with a little deliberation. The time has arrived to allow the Iberian Council to vote upon the economic question. And as required, the Caldeos emerged from the secluded room and announced to assembly that the time has come for a range of binding vote. A majority of the votes will be required to approve the path for reform. A brief intermission is called, and the Caldeos retreat to their respective blocks. Franco and Salazar waste no time in attempting to whip their votes, largely hoping to sway the more conservative elements to the cause, many within these blocks. Uh, however, remain unconvinced of voting to appease the Caldeos and plan to vote for the true economic path which they support. As Franco attempts to steer conservatives to vote for liberalization, and Salazar attempts to whip votes for his agenda of conservatism, the fate of the economic reform seems uncertain. Down the boat comes, and deliberative murmurs of the assembly dies down. The Caldeos call for the votes to begin. The opus die and, are, in the, uh, and the, are the first to take the table of reform, supported by Franco in an attempt to secure the most possible majority vote. The speaker calls for all those in favor of the proposal to rise, much of Franco's dismay. A large majority of the conservatives who had appealed to a favor Appeal to vote in favor of the liberalization refused to rise. The liberalization reforms fa failed to grab a majority next, and defines the Franco support for the Opus Die, the Falanges tabled their autarky proposal. Without Franco support, however, the Falanges obtained a pitiful fraction of the vote. Finally, Salazarian conservatives tabled their motion for a status quo. Once again, a clear minority rises to the feet in favor of uh, Salazar's status quo. The Iberian Council assessed at a standstill, with only the Falanges being decisively defeated. With the voting inconclusively drawing onwards into the night, the Cadillus call voting to a close, but the leaders hoping to be able to regroup their support for a later voting date. The nation holds breath. So, does this change these decisions? I'm not sure. That's why I saved it. Because um, if it does, I definitely don't want to click on this yet. So, if we do this. Stabilizing Iberia. Is it actually screwed up? That's so stupid. Why does it get rid of it? Social liberals. And the horse and the Frank, opinion of Franco. Come, bro. Dudes, come on. So we can't do this one. Dominico Dio. Uh, form an advisory council. Holds more power than Salazar, which we barely do. But, um, I'll go back and reload the save. I do want to do this path quite a bit. Mm, economic malaise. Why do we just so short with, uh, with the Salazar? That makes no sense to me. First development plan. But, trust the ministries. In recent years, the approach of the Iberian government to resolve the current economic crisis has been one of slow liberalization, ensuring a steady pace is taken to prevent any economic destabilization. The plan has been said to be the right way to take the economy from the advice of our ministries, though they offer a unique piece of advice to begin accelerating this process and increase our involvement in the recovery process. Throughout the ec this economic plan, we'll find ourselves greatly liberalizing our current economic system, which many prominent economists believe to be the better path to track. All that we can do now is hope that these assumptions are proven right and Iberia can cloud up, be clouded out of this economic quagmire. Be more to come decentralized, very nice. Uh, new industrial stagnation, worse than the bureaucrats' opinion of Franco, uh, will be nullified. And all industrial effects, all industrial effects of the economic miracle will be decreased by 5%. Federal consumption tax. Income taxes will increase. Ooh. Revise Senpa. Spend more money. Agriculture gets a, begins to improve. improve. Better access will begin. Promote consumption. Sponsor new campaigns. Ooh. GDP of the country states. New industrial legislation. The current industrial conditioning within Portugal is greatly hampering the progress of industrial development, as many potential investors in the region are greatly discouraged as a result of the entirely regimented system in place. Through clearing out this dysfunctional system, we will, be, we will revamp investment in the region and install new legislation to work to the best of the region's benefits. First step to resolve the flawed legislation will be replaced entirely, implementing reform industrial limitation legislation will allow us to benefit from the pre-existing system of industrial limitation, though it will also be toned down after to reap the rewards of a liberal, liberated market. Before long, investments in Portugal will increase, of course, beyond comparison, and benefit the Iberian Union beyond belief. Wheat, figs, and grapes. 
Last year, the uh, council's discussion had been dominated by efforts to reshape the Iberian Constitution. With the support of all but a few dozen hardline conservatives, these measures were largely uncontroversial. The same could not be said of the recent economic cons- uh, discussions, though, for months. Reformers and conservatives had argued over the direction of the Iberian economy. Uh, when the failure of both the hope is down, the phalange to win the hearts and minds of the council featured the Iberian economies following the council's motto, supported by Caldeo Salazar. Caldeo has recently returned from a secret of business summit in Algarve. The transcripts of their discussions are having been made public, from what information the press could discern. After hours of discussion with Iberia's most influential and powerful businessmen, the Caldeos have agreed to a moderate reform plan balancing the needs of various sectors. Most changes are aimed at expanding and continuing to protect Iberia's heavy industry while gradually liberalizing most other sectors of the economy. Today, Caldeo Salazar stands before the podium and delivers a speech before the council. Friends, counselors, and citizens of Iberia. In the past 15 years, our union has given its people an unprecedented standard of living, far healthier, happier, and wealthier than anyone could have imagined. Still, there is much work that remains to be done. I recently toured the northeastern areas of Portugal where I grew up. There I saw wheat fields dry after only a few rainless days due to poor irrigation, or visited a once bountiful fig orchard, orchard which had been ruined by a beetle infestation. I visited a vineyard which is truly marvelous wine, but its grapes are smaller and fewer number than those from Italian or French wineries. The problems facing Iberian agriculture speak to the problems affecting our economy as a whole. Uh, though our economy is stable, growing and among the largest in Europe, we have the potential to achieve even greater success. I stand before the Council today to announce Iberia's path forward, a path which will meet the needs of all Iberian industries, as we march towards 1970. New government policies will be used to expand vital industry and promote trade with domestic and inter- international. The tax quo will be streamlined and rational, as emerging opportunities brought by about new by new technology will be explored. How will this affect the price of bread and wine? What is this? Open for business. Oh! I should have done this one earlier. I didn't realize there's more... I, thought, oh, I didn't even see this stuff. Oh, wow! Spend heavy industry. Ooh, wow, look at that. Every European state with an airport will receive another one. What? Every European state without an airport and more than 700,000 people will receive one. Wow. Me with a big fish. Interest rates will decrease. Ooh. Reduce heavy tariffs. I heard an industrial expertise gain, though. Worse some bureaucrats, income taxes, and business taxes will increase. Allows foreign investments. Oh my god. Open for business. One of the many advantages. Well, which Iberia benefits from is its non-committal relationships with nations across the world is that of trade. As few uh, see the Iberian a Union as an enemy, we've been able to benefit from smaller trade deals with most of all hegemonies which surround us. Even still, however, we have found ourselves unable to reap all the benefits provided by further pursuing these relationships. Through redoubling our efforts to cooperate with foreign uh, powers and open up Iberia to foreign investments and even foreign companies coming into the Iberian Union, with this change, Iberia should become a new testament to the international cooperation. As foreign tourists and business magnates come to visit the beaches and factories of Iberia looking for pleasure and for profit, benefiting Iberian industries as a whole and as thanks to the increased investment uh, into the burgeoning new industries of the Union. So, businessmen sell the majority and foreign opinions. Oh, there's more here. So, right now, uh, military church natives and silent majority is fully Franco aligned. Silent majority, silent majority, huh? So foreign leaders, they don't have a preference. Businessmen don't have a preference. But for this one, the silent majority improve, will improve their opinion of us. But they already have a fully Franco line, so we can we can piss them off. So, so right, the silent majority, right? Yeah, silent majority. Yeah. Purge problematic but popular officials. We have reason to believe that certain favorites of the of a carver unacceptable views. The removal is necessary. And we're always going to make more guns, so. Torah de Iberia begins construction. Much commotion has captured the streets of Madrid, as numerous people had committed or had come to marvel what occupied the center of the city. It was aged. Uh, it was a grand, sprawling construction site crawling with activity and mystery. Their slight confusion soon transformed into all encompassing awe. After all, a construction company or construction occupying a site so large would soon become a site for all the world to behold. That was precisely what the higher ups of Iberia had in mind. But they decided that a towering momentum to prosperity would be made once so tall could reach into the heavens. It was symbolized the country's united leadership and the people's achievements, chief among them the economic progress the two had helped to encourage they would have to construct it. In the heart of the peninsula, where all would come and stand in wonder of the, the accomplishment. Unfortunately, building such a monolith would take time, most likely several years, and would be a, come at, at a substantial cost. Yet the powers that would be deemed such things necessary sacrifices in the name of national prestige. Once the Torah de Iberia is erected, Iberia will truly see eye to eye with their international rivals. The long wait begins from the tax system. Income increases, huh? Screw this. Reform for the tax system. As is known within and without Iberia, the taxation system of the Union is outright incomprehensible best and unusable worse. Such a deeply rooted issue cannot be torn up over the course of a month, though we may be able to reform some aspects of the system to make it at least feasible in the short term. One of the many changes which can be made to streamline the system or at least improve upon its efficiency has been decided to be increasing taxation upon the people and the businesses to increase revenue, while also slashing spending wherever we can. While this decision may not be the most popular decision which we will make in fixing the economy, we can at least improve upon the system, and that is more than worth it. A lesson to remember, the two accents the operatives walked into the San Sebastian Elementary School. 
Uh, the boots thumping on the floor as they walked. Guillermo had a gun and though he kept it holstered to shoot the kids. Uh, drawing a gun in school would be a disaster. His partner, Alejandro, the senior agent, was carrying a truncheon. While arresting someone as they were teaching a class was poor time, and they had been ordered to bring the men in as soon as possible. The two men entered the classroom. We were under arrest for nationalist agitation, said Alejandro. Repeating though his mantra in a practice monotone, he had no sense of subtlety. As his partner wrestled the teacher onto the ground, handcuffed him, and struggled him out of the door, it fell on Guillermo to cover for the children. Ah, he looked at them, stepping towards the door and gave them a small speech. Your teacher was a Basque separatist. That means he tried to destroy Iberia. Look out for anyone who does the same. His words were drowned out by the sounds of thrashing and screams from the hallway outside the classroom. Pretty normal. As the leather now bloodied and bruised man out of the building, Guillermo stumbled on, onto the door frame, falling down the steps to the entrance. What the heck? Pay attention to your surroundings. Clumsiness could be the end of you someday. The junior operative, still in a daze, picked himself up and apologized on the way back to the station. Guillermo stared out of the passenger seat of the AAS undercover car. The children, the faces of horror, watching someone as they knew, being removed by force, the fear, hearing the pounding and screams from the hallway. He had skimmed the teacher's profile before the mission, and he was no violent criminal. He did not deserve this. Breaking the silence, his own face partner began to chuckle. Hey, the best type of arrest is one that teaches a lesson. Ha. Huh. Funny stuff. 49, 36. Just in case. Keep them down. Good. Keep it down too. I really don't want any more issues here. I can do stuff here, but we're not going to right now. We're just open for business. Um, and then we'll probably do a lot more business, but we'll probably just beeline through all this stuff here. Uh, allow for investments. If we ever hope to exploit our ties to foreign nations, we must first allow for these ties to be exploited in the first place. As it stands, the economy of the Iberian Union is entirely unprepared for foreign interaction, at least in a legal sense, as foreign investment has been outright banned for several years, plus thus putting a considerable roadblock in the way for growth within Iberian private industries. The first step towards ensuring growth in the private sectors, then, is to allow foreign uh, investments to invest where the Iberian uh, Peseta cannot, through passing. Uh, new legislation ensuring this foreign investment will be sure to not only benefit greatly from untold amounts of wealth being poured into the private industries, but also stronger relations within the, with powers across the globe as we find ourselves uh, bound closer and closer with foreign powers. The bottom. After months of the faithful altercation, the inspector's study had been a blur. Each day he lost himself in the case, and the parts of his personal life quickly began to fall away. With no consistent stream of income, it came as no surprise that his house in eastern Valladolid Dolid, was soon repossessed, no less by a local bank, to which uh, the inspector had been a loyal customer for many years. He would never forget the excitement in the clerk's eyes as he brought in the deed. The inspector had briefly searched for clues to where his wife had gone, only to find the same results he had been getting with the case. He had a harsh jab upon this realization, something which slowly died away as he continued with his work. It had not taken long for him to find a new base of operations, his old school friend's house. The inspector had been lucky. The newlywed couple had two spare rooms prepared when the house would become lively with the cries of children. Sitting at his new desk, he noticed a letter balanced on top of his case files. One quick tear, and he saw the dreaded word he had prepared for himself for. Divorce. It should have been obvious that no one could get an illegal divorce in Iberia. She had traveled abroad. The letter dug deep into his chest, passed the ribcage and lung straight into the heart. A new husband, far away from the distant former colonial lands of Venezuela. A job she finally was enjoying. His eyes began to blur as he read the next sentence. A child not yet born, but soon to enrich her newly formed family's lives. Streams ran down his unshaven face, pulling on the case files in front of him. The inspector continued reading, and soon his despair turned into a white-hot rage. She was offering, offering him a job at her new husband's steel factory. Did she feel sorry for him? Did she not realize the importance of his task? He grabbed a lighter and a cigarette out of his pocket. With a swift movement, he let both the tobacco and the letter. Throwing the burning mess out of the window in front of him, he again returned to the case, files in front of him. Nothing mattered now, only the case. There was nothing else left, and sometimes that really is how it feels. Nothing else you can do. And you have to work on your job no matter what, and then die. Welcome to the world, kids. Welcome to the world. Open for business, as we should be. Number from the tax system, heavily reduced tariffs. One of the many aspects string on the Iberian economy is a lack of trade, which has greatly decreased from the Iberian Union's ability to keep pace with the competing world powers, at least technologically speaking. This limited trade has most certainly been a result of countless tariffs placed on both imports and exports, making it nearly impossible to trade with the foreign nations with any genuine profits as a result. The Iberian Union has been practically disconnected from the rest of the world and has shown a lack of growth in recent years. Now they've gotten the chance to address this problem, however, we must do everything in our powers to nullify the mistakes we have made in the past and prepare to tackle the future. Drastically cutting down these tariffs, if not abolishing them outright, will do wonders for the economy. This will not only allow for new sources of revenue for the various private industries across Siberia, but also allows for the average Iberian to purchase countless more products of international origin for much lower price than they may have been otherwise. With this change, Iberia will be able to breathe a sigh of relief from the economic challenges which at once had troubled it. A uh, car from the future. Light gleamed off the freshly coated car, sitting on the exhibition stand in the city of Porto. Scarlet paint blanketed the ridges of this most unusually shaped car. The huge wheels that looked more befitting of a truck than of such a small car rose to over half the vehicle's total height. Its teardrop headlights looked nothing like the circular lights on the cars of any audience member. Oh, it's been quarterly funny, huh? 
Nice. An athletic tall Italian man walked onto the set. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Ferrari Dino 206 GT. Now, I don't know if the Portuguese tend to follow car racing, but if you do, you know exactly what this vehicle is. A few years ago, we won the biggest car race in America with a vehicle that looked, looked just like this one here. And after a few years of tweaking to make it safer and cheaper, we're excited to announce to you this piece of racing history right in front of you, for which can be yours. A 2 liter, 160 horsepower engine far stronger than any other vehicle in the size in Europe. Feels injected straight into the engine, giving you more horsepower, less smoke, and a smoother ride. So you can practically fly up to 270 kilometers per hour, and if you give me just one second. They open the driver's seat door and turn on the engine, it was a soft, echoey hum that sounded more like a woodwind instrument than a car. This, my friends, is the pinnacle of Italian engineering. She's fast, very fast. Sounds as beautiful as she looks, clean, safe, and sexy. I wonder, can I just jump in there and take it? Tariffs? The Iberia is different, of course. It seems that the Iberian Union has found itself fomenting at the perfect storm of an odd sort of industry which the peninsula is far from unfamiliar with. Tourism! The notion of inviting foreigners over to spend their money and see the sights of Iberia has died off in recent years as thanks to the Cold War and Iberia's own isolationism. It seems that with the rolling back on the latter aspect, there are a few brave which have decided to stage their vacation in Iberia. The new challenge then is how we get everyone else to visit Iberia. The solution. An advertising scheme of unrivaled scale across the globe. The Iberian Union consists of countless beautiful landmarks and sets of scenery, alluring enough for any tourists to add it to their list. Through, though a very of cultures, the peninsula are surely attract just as many who would like to, or look for a unique experience. With every passing day, Iberia is becoming more beautiful as the problems have been all but resolved, at least in terms of foreign involvement in the economy. Truly, the peninsula is beginning to heal. Really very good, but I think I'm going to end the episode there as we continue to destroy, hopefully, these guys, because these guys are getting very close, and these guys are a bit too high right now, but, you know, whatever. Uh, but I think we'll end it there. Oh, look at that. Five billion? Still really not good. Ooh, admin efficiency. Ooh. That means less population tax. We're still five billion. If we did this, we're almost eight billion, which is going to be, that would extremely explode us up, because we don't have the numbers for that. We would get, we would get more growth, though, but... The, the amount we get is probably not worth it. Ooh, we can actually do more armor funding. Didn't really help all that much. But if you enjoyed the video, though, wow, look at that inflation. Leave a like for inflation. Subscribe if you're new and like inflation. And uh, uh, check out my Discord link in the description below. Please don't like inflation. And I will see you tomorrow as we'll continue with the Iberian Union. Thanks for watching. Have a great, extremely high deficit rest of your day.